Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. First of all, there still seems to be a lot of confusion, so maybe just this will help you. I'm going to go over the schedule, okay? I'm going to try to make it obvious. So let's go over, like, today. I think I got today or Monday here. Monday. Actually, today's Tuesday because I'm actually doing this Monday night. So unless you're an eat, then you're not going to see it. So this is what it said. It said, send in note worksheet over Lennon and worksheet 10 front side. That's because that's what you were supposed to do on Friday. You can send it in any time over the weekend, and most of you did. Now, then it said, what are you supposed to do today? Well, you're supposed to fill out the note worksheet 2 over Lennon PowerPoint, the two-sided one. That's what you're supposed to do today. Now, if you were working or you got other things going on during the day, that means on Monday night you're doing this. This is what we're doing on Monday. Then it's finished the worksheet. Okay? That's what we're doing Monday. So, let's say you are doing it Monday night then you might as well scan it in right away. So I should have done this, and I'm going to make a new schedule that says this. I should have said April 6th, Monday. Scan and send in the two things you did yesterday. Oh, that's these over here. And do today. That would be on Monday. Note worksheet 2 over Lennon and finish worksheet 10. And Tuesday. That's today. Today's Tuesday. Again, because I'm doing this Monday night. So, send and scan, oops, send and scan, send and scan what you did yesterday, and you can put your name, like Fred, Len Note 2, Worksheet X, your name and Worksheet X, okay? Obviously, if you didn't send in Worksheet X just the front side because you're a minimalist, then you would put a, I don't have it here, but you would put a B here saying that it's Worksheet X back. So again, your name, Worksheet X. Then your name, Lend Note 2. Some of you already sent it in, that's fine. And by the way, I really want people to learn that little scan thing. Um, you know, watch a YouTube or something. Because that's the easiest. Some of you guys are really good at changing the name and saying it in. God bless you guys. That's great. You other people, I'm going to continue bugging you. I might call you. Because I want you to use that scanning method. So, then what are you supposed to be doing today? Oh, I know. Watch this video right here and do Sanger Note Worksheet 1. Here's Obi, who's bugging me because he wants to eat. So I'm going to go feed him. Well, that was certainly annoying. As I was saying, um, and why not scan it tonight? Yeah. Why don't, right after you finish it, scan it and put it in? Why not? Okay, but I'm, I'm going to continue with the schedule. Just to get us to Good Friday. So, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday. What are we supposed to do? Last minute, scan in. And you can call it your name, Sanger or Sang Note 1. Or even End 1. That works too. Saying is important because it tells me which one it is. So, if you didn't send it in uh, tonight, then you send it in tomorrow morning. If you don't have time tomorrow morning, you send it in the night. Because remember I said noon is when it's due. Okay? I said I'll give you a grace period, but, you know, some people are waiting until that time is over, and you're just going to lose points. Okay? And do today. Now this is when today is Wednesday. Fill out note worksheet 2, which is one side. So here's note worksheet 2 over Margaret Sanger. It's just a one-sider. And it'll be a short video. I'm ending this one just at this one. So it'll be a totally video. 
not even 20 minutes. Well, maybe 20 minutes with commercials. I'm not doing any commercials on this one, sorry. And do today, that's today on Wednesday, then you do the handout, the Sanger handout, which will be on Power School, unless you had your packet. And both sides is what you're working on. So again, I tried to make it so that every day there was three sides. I shortened this, this handout, so that it would be easy all the way around. So then, one side here, this side is. And whatever I put here, why not scan it in today or evening? Presuming today is Wednesday. Let's keep going. Thursday, last assignment. Then, if you have it, you scan the above. You call it Sang Hand 1, Sang Hand 2. This is Note Worksheet 2. This is Handout 1. Then what are you supposed to do on Thursday? Very simple. There's only, oh, I thought I fixed it. That's supposed to be Sanger. Uh, it's only a one-sider. That's all you got to do on Thursday. And just so that you get Good Friday off, and this is the schedule as it was before, scan it in before midnight. So... If you're doing anything on Good Friday, it's your own fault. That means you're running late, not me. I spread it out nice and evenly, okay? So I arranged right away that you would get Good Friday off. And because Mr. McMahon wants us to have Monday off, all I got to do is move my circle day from Monday to Tuesday. Even though the video will be out on Monday, you don't have to circle till Tuesday. And then the quiz is going to be on Wednesday. So you just have to move it back one day. And I was ready to do that. So this is our schedule. It hasn't changed. The assignment, since it's only one side on Thursday, means people who are lagging behind can catch up on Thursday. Again, if you don't, it's your own fault. If Easter or if Holy Saturday gets here and you're still missing stuff, you're losing points. Okay? And if I don't get it, it's a zero. That's what uh, Mr. McMahon said to do. So just keep that in mind. So, we're going to start on this. You can re-watch this if you want, but it can't be any clearer than this, okay? So, this is all about Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger. And I used to do it, Our Lady of Fatima. I put that in the next section. I cut this section down just so that we could spread it out and be easier for you. You can thank me later. Thank you. And it's very simple. Margaret Sanger, evil. Our Lady of Fatima, good. But we're going to wait for the next section for Our Lady of Fatima. So let's start here. There she is right there. See her eyes looking right at you. All right. Her years, 18... 79 to 1966. What century did she live in? Ethan, you're not paying attention. She lived in the 19th and 20th century. And her nationality, U.S. of A. Actually, New York is where she was. New York. Her first religion was Catholic. Margaret Sanger. And number three, what was her mom's religion? Catholic. What was her dad's religion? Socialist, atheist. Okay? So mom actually would like to practice her faith, didn't get to, because dad was a social atheist, didn't really like Catholics. Um, occupation, activist. I don't think she, oh, she was a nurse. I probably should have put nurse. We'll just call her activist, okay? And her most famous book is The Pivot of Civilization, 1922. The Pivot of Civilization. And famous quote, the most merciful thing that a large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. That's from 1920, Women and the New Rebel. Yeah, I like it. The most merciful thing that a large family does to one of its infant members is to kill it. That's a Margaret Sanger quote. Again, 
I zoomed in on it right now. Well, I have been. So now uh, you can pause it. We're going to go to the next one. Sorry it's a long one, but all the other ones are fill in the blank. What she say about marriage? It, she really meant this. She really meant this, by the way. And that is, a woman's physical satisfaction was more important than any marriage vow. That's from her Birth Control in America, page 11. A woman's physical satisfaction was more important than any marriage vow. That's her quote on marriage. And when you, a lot of this you're going to, in the handout, you're going to get a lot more detail and you're going to find out just how true she meant that. Okay, pause it if you need to. You had two of here. I'm going to zoom in right now. I probably already zoomed in. Pause it. Okay, we're moving on. Wait a minute. Oh, this you don't have to write down. More children from the less fit from the unfit. That is the chief aim of birth control. More children from the fit, less from the unfit. There we go. Early life. She was one of 11 children. Oh, number seven. Who said the chief aim of birth control? That would be Margaret Sanger. So number seven is Margaret Sanger, and it's right here. That's how you spell it. Um, and we don't have a question. If she was one of 11 children, mother was Catholic but not allowed to go to Mass. Number eight is a yes or no. Number nine, her dad was an atheist and a socialist and hated the Catholic Church, although a stonemason mason, who made statues for the church. Isn't that ironic? His job was making statues that would go in a church, the church would pay him, and he hated the Catholic Church. And so number nine is a yes or no. What was his dad's job? Stonemason, right there. Stone Mason. I hope I'm not in the way of Margaret. If she doesn't look real clear, that's because even me standing here shouldn't look that clear. Number 10 is the next one. Because her father kept offending everyone, he soon had little work. Okay, so he, he would just tell people off all the time and nobody wanted to hire him anymore. Um, the poverty family increased because he would spend money foolishly like the time he spent the winter coal money to throw a banquet for a socialist reformer. So, did I, no I didn't have the, oh I did not. That's going to be on your note worksheet. Let's keep going, or not your note worksheet, your handout worksheet. She did occasionally sneak to church and by the age 13 was baptized. So number 11, did she sneak off to church? She actually did when she was young. And she was baptized at age 13, right here. And she went to Calvary College where she met Coy Elberson. They got engaged, but they preferred a trial marriage, which means they lived together. And uh, I don't have a question on that. Okay, so let's keep going. And her father called her home because her mom was dying. And we're going to get to the next one. Wait, he actually allowed... Oh, I didn't even see that. He actually allowed a priest to come and give her last rites. So that would be... Number 13, when Margaret's mom was dying, who did her dad amazingly allow to come over? A priest, right there. A priest. Okay. Pause if you need to. So she fought with her dad a lot and blamed the 18 pregnancies for her birth. And so number 14, who did Margaret Sanger blame for her mom's death? Her dad. And she got a job at White Plains, New Jersey, apprentice nurse at a hospital. There she met William Sanger. And where'd she work at? Right there, White Plains. And what was her occupation? Nurse. That's, that is pretty simple. I hope you get that. Okay, and... 
Margaret Sanger was a socialist anarch who also hated all churches. So they always say sometimes a girl marries her father. That's Margaret Sanger. Yep, fell in love with a socialist anarchist. Love at first sight. So that number 16, those are the two words that describe William Sanger. And they were married August of 1902 by a minister and two witnesses. So we don't have anything there. And they had three children between the years 1903 to 1911. The couple attended many social political events and usually left the children with whoever they could. And she was already lecturing on the importance of birth control in 1911. She was introduced to the free love movement by Anna Goldman. That's your answer for number 17. Emma Goldman, right here, right there. And that was the free love. It started that early. And William did not like this. Imagine that. And she went back to nursing and worked in New York City. New York City helping poor women deliver their babies in New York City. So, number 18 is right here. Everything's underlined here, so you can pause it. We're moving on, because it's already getting long. Up, oh, uh, life-turning event. That's what we're doing right now. She witnessed the death of Sadie Sachs, who died from a self-induced abortion. Number 19 is her name, Sadie Sachs. She had been pleading with Sanger three months early for some birth control. Uh, that night she decided she must do something. Well, it, and so what she did that night is she tried to do a self-abortion, uh, which I don't think is very smart, and obviously she be, probably bled to death. And uh, so that dramatized her because she felt I should have gave her birth control. This never would have happened. My friend would not have died if I would have gave her contraception. Never say anything like maybe sitting down talking with her, like, you know, what's really wrong? Why are you going out with all these guys? Maybe that would have made some sense, but she didn't do that. So, William and Margaret attended socials at the Mabel Dodge where they talked about radical socialist agenda, but Margaret was the one that brought up sex, free love, and birth control. So, in 1913, Margaret was caught having an affair. Doesn't mean she didn't have other affairs, it just means this one, she got caught. So, number 20, was Margaret known for having affairs with other men? Yes, this wouldn't be the, probably wasn't the first, and it wouldn't be the last. Uh, William took Margaret to Paris for a second honeymoon. So William thinks, hey, maybe get her away from this other guy. We'll go to Paris, we'll have a second honeymoon. She will fall in love again, and everybody will be happy. But Margaret was impressed by the ease of getting birth control, in France, of course, and she wanted to bring this information to the United States. William did not want to turn, so she took the kids and went without him. So, number 21, what year? Oh, we're not even to 21 yet. So anyway, that's what she did. She just left him. Bye, see ya. Hasta la vista. Back in the U.S., she found another guy to have an affair with, and so another affair. Again, not the first, not the last, but in 1914, she started a newspaper called The Woman Rebel, which is your answer for number 21. Actually, I don't even got the name of the woman web rebel, sorry. What year did she start the newspaper? That was 1914. The other question said, what was her slogan? Her slogan was, no gods, no masters. I think this answer right here is on your uh, handout. So, no gods, no masters is her slogan. Number 22, and then we're going to turn the page. 
She railed against the evils of capitalism and religion, and the only good thing was contraceptives. Um, okay, so Margaret Sanger is known as a very early feminist, and uh, notice it says here she hated capitalism. What's the opposite of capitalism? Socialist, socialism. She married a socialist. Her dad was a socialist. So very early, feminism and Marxism kind of went hand in hand. You see a lot of the same stuff in there. So it, when, once we know what socialism is and Marxism, we kind of can see it more. Anyway, let's keep going. Now, I made a mistake, and um, I'm not going to make this mistake next year, but... Okay, we just finished the front side of Note Worksheet 1 over Margaret Sanger. Well, this Note Worksheet 2 on Margaret Sanger is actually the next one. The back side of this is actually supposed to be the back side of this. Okay, so I'm all messed up. So, now you have to go to Note Worksheet 2 on Margaret Sanger. Notice it's right there on top. Oh, there it is. Isn't that magic? That is so cool. No Worksheet 2, Margaret Sanger. That's the one you want called No Worksheet 2 over Margaret on Margaret Sanger, okay? So when you scan it in, on the front side will be No Worksheet 1, and this one will be on the other side. So those two will be scanning together. And this one, which starts at 27 with no title, that is going to be there. Now, when I scan these in, I'm going to change it. So if you're getting the copies, you don't have the packet, then I'm putting Note Worksheet 2 there, and I'm just going to call this back side Note Worksheet 3. So you have three papers scanned in, and this will be Note Worksheet 3. So this still works with everybody. This is called Note Worksheet 2. So, right, number one, I was nice, you didn't have to write this out. Number one, eugenics, the study or, or belief of the possibility of improving the qualities of the human species or a human population. We've already talked about eugenics. That's when you want the fit, well, it, basically you want the unfit to die, get rid of them, the handicapped, the mentally ill. That's eugenics. Now, negative eugenics is using such means to discourage reproduction by persons having genetic defects or presumed to have inheritable, unde undesirable traits. And as you guys remember from the play last year, that was all about anybody who was handicapped and they were related to them, they were sterilized. And that's negative eugenics. Now, positive eugenics encourage the, the reproduction by person presumed to have inheritable desirable traits. And that's what we talked about last time when in communist Russia they would breed their athletes to get more of a super athlete. That was positive eugenics. So there you go, you got one, two, and three right there. One, two, and three. That isn't that hard if you don't have it, pause it. Okay? We're moving on. Margaret Sanger quotes. Well, not a quote yet. Professor Sanger was a nurse who testified before the U.S. Senate in 1916 to call for the formation of the Population Congress that would seek to employ negative eugenics to separate humanity. She was really big, really big on eugenics. So the answer that you're looking for is U.S. Senate. And so by this time, I don't know why she got to, but she already had a reputation on the people with money, and they got her to talk to the U.S. Senate. So what did she ask for? Formation of the Population Congress. Formation of the Population Congress. Again, number five. Formation of the Population Congress. And number six, what did Sanger want draft to reduce drastically? 
Too many unfit were coming in. That's the next one. She wanted to drastically limit immigration. So the answer is actually just immigration. Of those considered unfit was a mainstream of Sanger and her fellow eugenics. So right away the progressive movement actually didn't like immigration until they found out they could vote in whatever president they wanted then. But back then they didn't like immigration. Why? Because the unfit would come into the mainstream. Their draconian purpose proposed of forced segregation for American citizens were commonly held views among these progressives who sought to achieve a superior, more intelligent race. So number seven, who are the people that had this forced segregation? Progressives did. And so it was forced by law so that these people wouldn't produce. Remember, when uh, Hitler took place was way later than this. He's 1933 when we get to him. And in this country, they're already talking about what can we do to keep the unfit from reproducing. So Hitler was actually just going right where the United States was going. So number eight, who sought to achieve a superior, more intelligent race? Oh, that once again is progressive, progressive. So number seven, eight, the exact same one. Okay, so you can pause it, but number nine, what does draconian mean? They still use that term. Um, I hear it on the news every once in a while, somebody uses it. It's, so what does it mean? Exceedingly harsh, very severe. Exceedingly harsh, very severe. So draconian laws mean they're really harsh. Okay, the term draconian has come to be used, referred to any unusually har harsh law. Exactly what I said, yeah. So let's move on. Margaret quotes, you have uh, your answer for both number um, 10 and 11 are right here. Apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and segregation to the greater population prodigy is already tainted. So that's what she wanted to do with them, sterilize them and segregate them. Okay, but how, how's that going to look? Well, to appropriate them to farmlands and homesteads for these segregated persons where they would be for the period of their entire lives. So she said, let's go get some farmland in the Midwest, like let's say Nebraska. We'll put a big giant barbed wire fence, we'll take these people who she says is unfit, and we'll... Um, We'll sterilize them and just put them in this giant pan because we don't want to kill them. That would be way too harsh. We'll put them in this giant pan where they will live for the rest of their lives. That's what Margaret Sanger wanted the United States government to do. Okay? And this is 1916. All right? Hitler is, do, you know, not even coming close to power. He didn't come into power until 1933. So. Margaret Sanger was just ahead of her time. So you got this, so pause it if you need it. That's 10, 11. And did Margaret Sanger think of charity? She said, organized charity itself is a symptom of a malignant social disease. Instead of decreasing and aiming to eliminate the stocks of people that are most detrimental to the future of the race in the world, it tends to render them, to a menacing degree, dominant. So, did she do it with a good thing? No. Just like uh, Darwin, she said, no, nope, charity is a bad thing. Who <clears throat> is the latest pro-choice? Oh, <laughs> this is five years old, and I don't even know if I have her name here. She was the founder of the American Birth Control League. Okay, this person right here, this was, oh man, no, this was probably six years ago. They got this college girl, she appeared like, oh, I'm just a 19 year old pending $200 a month on contraceptives. No, I think she said $500 a month on contraceptives. And they found out that she was 26 years old, not 18 years old. 
and that she actually was an activist. But they had her go before Congress to have this sob story, and all the news people loved her. And it was all a bunch of uh, hoax. Okay, she was the founder of the American Birth Control League, and that was, yeah, that's number 14. Oh yeah, number 13. What did Sanger, modern day Tourette, think was bad? It stopped the natural selection, getting rid of the unfit? The answer for number uh, 13 is actually charity. So put charity for 13, all right? Right there. Charity for 13. Now, number 14 is the American Birth Control League. American Birth Control League. Write that down for 14. And 15, in 1943, it was renamed Planned Parenthood. All right, so it was 1943. Instead of being called the American Birth Control League, it became Planned Parenthood. Okay, that's number 15. Pause it if you need it, but I think there's a 16 right here. Yep, she was funded by the same elite eugenist, John D. Rockefeller. So it said, what elite eugenist founded, funded Margaret Sanger? John D. Rockefeller. And to this day, the billionaires are still funding Planned Parenthood. Now they get a lot of the government to give it, it money too, but they still write out hefty checks. So that's number 16. John, sorry, John D. Rockefeller. Pause it if you need it. We're going to 17. And Rockefeller also funded the Eugene Fisher and his works at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. And this, we're going to find out we do Hitler, is what Hitler used to scientifically prove that the Jews was an inferior race and need to be eliminated. And American money from the Rockefellers was actually uh, also supporting that works of that institute. Um, so his name right then, John D. Rockefeller, number 17. Number 18, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute was responsible for the Nazi scientific theories of racial hygiene that led to the slaughter of millions of Jews, gypsies, blacks, and other deemed inferior race. So number 18 is the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Right there, those three words, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. And I'd love to do uh, have a couple slides just on that when we do Hitler. I might still do that. But anyway, write those three words down. Oh, it's right above it too. That's number 18. Number 19. Many of them saying are associated with professionally and editorially um, are found by scholars to have greatly influenced Nazis' racist ideology. So number 19 is a yes or no. So you would see these people that helped Margaret Sanger also help the Nazis. They'd be quoted by them saying, hey, look at these American scholars. What, they, what are they saying? To carry out her population control plans, her organization, American Birth Control League, that she founded in 1921, opened up its facilities in prominently black immigrant and poor area of New York City. So what kind of people live in the area of Sanger's first birth control clinic? Black, immigrant, and poor. Here you go, three words, well, an end sign. Black, immigrant, and poor. So 20, you have a lot of room to write three words, okay? Number 21, this organization to ensure that poor blacks were not producing and were using birth control. And she started the Negro Project. That was number 21, started in 1939. So, and uh, there it is. The aim of the Negro Project was to ensure that poor blacks we're not reproducing and we're using birth control devices. Some of you probably already know, maybe you don't know, that in New York City, 
there's more black babies who are being aborted than are born. You think about that. There's more black babies in New York City that are being aborted than are being born. And somebody put a billboard up that said exactly that. And all the media was going crazy, not just in New York, but all over. It was calling the guy a racist that put up that sign. The guy that put up that sign was black. Uh, and so they did uh, take down the sign because of peer pressure, but it's still true to this day. Margaret Sanger summary. What was a firm belief? Who was she? Was a firm believer in Darwinism? Do I have that? Yes. Was saying a firm believer in Darwinism? Yes. That's a long blank for yes or no. And what is Darwin's famous motto? Survival of the fittest. So again, Margaret Sanger really believed this. Survival of the fittest. So write that down. Number twenty-three. What was her goal? to stop poverty by eliminating the poor. She believed that the poor should not be allowed to reproduce. So number 24, who should not be allowed to reproduce? The poor, but what was your goal? You have to write this down. To stop poverty by eliminating the poor. And the way that the, um, the UN works is exactly like that. They, they actually do very little to help the poor because they want to eliminate poverty by eliminating the poor. You see that in there are a lot of policies. Um, to stop poverty by eliminating the poor. Okay? I've used this quote a lot talking about some of the, uh, the policies like the UN. To stop poverty by eliminating the poor. Not helping them, not getting them educated, let them die. Okay? So she believed that the poor would just continue to reproduce poor people and they should not be allowed to reproduce. So that was your number 25. Finally, number 26. Wow, it's been a long night. Who did she especially want to sterilize? Blacks and minorities. Okay, we're going to stop at 26 because this is a long video. Blacks and minorities. So, because I'm tired, we're going to end with clapping. You can pause if you need it. Adios, people.